All right. So the recording is on. Good morning and welcome everybody to the class today. Um, I think this will be our final class in this course on uh, uh, urban church planting. Uh, after this, I will just uh, create the assessments, three assessments for you. So, um, and you can do that. It'll be in the works, workspace uh, online. And so basically in November, you just take time to do those assessments. They'll be simple and easy assessments and uh, we'll be done with the course. Okay, uh, let's just take a moment to pray. Could somebody please uh, pray with us and we will start. Um, Dave, would you pray and we can start? Sure. Father, we come before you and we thank you for today, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you have been so wonderful, so faithful to each one of us, Lord Jesus. In our own life, Lord God, you know, even through this hardest situation, hardest time, Lord Jesus, you have always been with us, Lord God, as we go uh, and learn. From, uh, from today's season, Lord Jesus, I pray that you open each one of our hearts and our ears, Lord Jesus, so that we can have your understanding, so that we can understand and and relate to our situation, Lord Jesus. I thank you. I pray for our pastor as he teaches, Lord Jesus, your spirit anointing and speak the word that you want us to hear, Lord Jesus. And I thank you. I bless your name in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So last class, that's yesterday, we uh, talked about um, some, you know, we just looked at some thoughts on the post-quarantine church. That is, um, uh, what would, what are some of the things to keep in mind uh, as the church moves out of this quarantine phase that we were forced to be in the last uh, almost almost two years now, or nearing two years, uh, that, you know, and uh, what are some things to keep in mind as we move out, uh, out of that? And how does, you know, in terms of, of church work, church planting and ministry, some things to keep in mind. So uh, we did that yesterday. And my plan for today is just to quickly review the entire course, um, the main sections that we covered, uh, just to refresh ourselves, uh, put it all together, and then we will uh, wrap up wrap up with that. So I'm just going to do a quick review uh, from the very beginning of the things we covered in this course. All right? And um, if there are any questions or things you want to discuss, you know, please feel free to do that. So in the introduction section in the course, I just shared a little bit of my own personal journey. Uh, we talked about the fact that the Holy Spirit must be a leader in, plant, in uh, urban church planting work or starting a ministry. So he's the director for our ministry. He's the one who would lead us and we follow his uh, directions. Uh, we talked about what are the definition, what is the definition objective of planting a church or starting a ministry. You know, we want to establish communities that are self-sustaining and that will, you know, be able to um, establish and host God's presence, disciple new believers and influence their region and multiply uh, more churches. That's what we are working towards. And whenever we plant a church, it's with the purpose of multiplication. In the very beginning, we said we need to get God's heart for our cities. Um, even though cities may be very big uh, and very, very complicated, a lot of challenges, but we need to look at our cities with the heart of God and be compassionate towards the people in our cities and be praying and interceding for our cities. Right? And then uh, we also said that as we look at our cities, urban centers, uh, we look at the natural dynamics, uh, what is going on you know, in the city. So be a little familiar with the background history of the city, with the political administration, the economy, the demographics, what are the challenges, the socioeconomic issues, and several other key things that you can look at in trying to understand what's going on in the city. And, you know, keep in touch with the news 
what's happening locally in your city or in the city where you're we're going to start a work, uh, understand what's going to happen, be in touch with those things. So it gives you a feel of the city, you know what to pray for, you know what needs to address and also helps us develop strategies to address areas of need. And we also mentioned the spiritual dynamics of urban centers. We need to understand that, that Satan is at work also in the city, um, trying to do his work of stealing, killing and destroying and uh, influencing the church. And, and some of this is expressed through things that we can observe, culture or the moral values and the struggles, the problems of the city. You know, a lot of those things are behind us. Uh, demonic parts are behind a lot of the evil and the wickedness that we see in the city. And so uh, having understood that, we saw that in the book of Acts, uh, there was a lot of emphasis on reaching cities. And we looked at um, different things that happened in the book of Acts as uh, you know, starting from Jerusalem, they moved on into Samaria and to Jude and other parts of the, uh, many other cities. Uh, Paul and his Paul and Barnabas on their first, first missionary journey targeted many important cities in their uh, time. They visited um, places like Athens and then Corinth and uh, Thessalonica and uh, many cities. And eventually Paul was in Rome as well and he impacted Rome. So cities have been part of God's work or you know the work of God was taking place in cities right from the very beginning. And so uh, we need to be uh, you know interested and also working towards either planting churches or starting ministries in our urban centers. Then in section two, uh, we started talking about the practical side of ministry. You know, we talked about how do you get started? Uh, you have you need to have a core team. We talked about how to choose people to be part of the core team. We can start preparing from a distance as we try to understand the city. Uh, we can you you know we could uh, get information about the city, pray, think through on certain things, find out people you may already know in the city. And then you re relocate to go into that city uh, eventually uh, and start work there. We also plan for finances. There are different ways that we could plan for finances, whether it's personal or from support that we receive. Uh, we plan for our personal needs because, you know, if you're with your family, uh, your family also needs to be taken care of while you are doing the work of the Lord. Uh, you plan for the legal and administrative side of things as well uh, because eventually uh, you're going to create an entity for the church or the Christian ministry. We talked about doing the survey, how you can survey the city, uh, try to understand what's happening, select the area that you want to start to work on, depending on your target audience, who are the people you're going to target. Uh, we talked about you know, getting to know your launch area, become familiar with areas that you can reach, uh, the preparation, you may have some pre-launch meetings so people get to know that you are there and you're going to do some ministry there. Um, you may engage in a period of time of worship, prayer, and intercession. And you also get to know your target audience, your primary target audience, you know, where they spend their time, what are their needs. Uh, you connect with people whom God may have already prepared for you in that place and uh, you know, share your vision. They may come and be a part of the core team. Uh, and then you identify your launch location where you're going to launch the church or the ministry. Uh, make sure it's accessible. Uh, certain things we spoke about here um, and other places that may be useful as you do the ministry. An alternative, of course, is to start at home. You can start as a house church model and start from there. So then you step into the launch phase, you get the work started and, you know there are many different ways to launch you could do a quiet launch or you could do a big big launch yeah. how you want to do it some things to keep in mind if you're doing your first church service uh, make sure you plan for follow-up with people when they come then we went into strategies for urban evangelism urban missions you know different ways that you could um, reach people 
of course, we need to keep all our methods as spirit-led, legal, and ethical. We don't want to break the law in any way. Um, we uh, develop and identify and develop strategies, maybe by age groups, maybe by areas of need in the city, different spheres of activity, making use of tools, uh, technology, and ultimately the focus is to disciple and equip believers. So we talked about different strategies for age groups. You know, we think about children, the youth. Uh, you can think about young adults, married families, senior citizens, different things that can be done for these different age groups. Um, strategies that address specific needs in the city. You think about these needs and how you can address them. Uh, strategies addressing different spheres of activity in the city as well. So uh, places where people are engaging or you know, spending most of the time in the workplace can think of ways to impact and influence them. And then of course, use tools, use the technology that we have and uh, we can uh, reach out to people. Then we talk about the seven mountain assignment, which, uh, which is important when you talk about urban centers uh, where we think uh, very strategically on different areas that we can reach how do we penetrate these seven spheres of society and how do we basically equip believers to go and make a difference right so we talked about the challenge the process that we need uh, we need to be able to model principles biblical principles we need to let our light shine by good works that we do and we need to pray spiritually uh, bring about spiritual transformation so we need to prepare believers, prepare their heart, uh, prepare spiritually with knowing biblical principles. And of course, they need to be skilled to go and work in those areas. Then believers can be positioned in those areas in different ways to make a difference. Then as the work grows, we talked about growth and consolidation as the church plant or the ministry grows, understand that there'll be stages of growth. And so we talked about uh, various stages and you know what, what we should be doing in those stages. There's a pioneering stage, there's the organizational or structural stage, there's a pastoral or team ministry stage, there's the training stage, and there's the apostolic function stage. That means the church or the plant that you've You've, you've, the church you've planted there will grow through these stages and we need to be aware so that we, uh, you know, we understand what's happening and correctly guide the growth of the work. Eventually we become self-sustaining uh, work. And then we can think about multiplication and branching as well. We can plant more congregations or open more locations in the same city. We can branch out into other cities and towns. And then lastly, we looked at some of the uh, different church growth models that are out there or uh, the way different churches have grown uh, around the world. Uh, and we just highlighted some of those things. So that was in the practical side. Then we spent some time talking about the spiritual aspects, which is, uh, you know, we really must engage in prayer. We understand that the real battle for souls is a spiritual battle. So we pray. We deal with Satan who's blinding the minds of people, holding people in bondage and trying to hinder the proclamation of the gospel. We deal with those powers. Uh, and uh, he also tries to weaken the church by infiltration. So as a church, we have responsibility, uh, a spiritual responsibility. We use our God-given authority and our weapons uh, to deal with these demonic powers. We pray and we exercise uh, spiritual authority uh, to see spiritual transformation over our regions, our cities. Uh, we pray, pray for the lost. We mentioned some points here on how to pray for the lost and also how to uh, you know, prepare ourselves for spiritual warfare. We always operate from a place uh, of the finished work of Christ on the cross. And that's how we engage uh, spiritually. And we exercise our spiritual authority uh, to open sp prison doors, spiritually speaking, to see people released and brought in to the kingdom of God. In addition to praying, we must also proclaim 
the uncompromised gospel with the power of God. We proclaim the full gospel. Uh, we do reason, we reason and demonstrate. Uh, and we also break controlling powers by the proclamation of the gospel. So we pray, we proclaim, but we must also prepare God's people, equip the saints for, to go out and make a difference. We prepare them with the word of God, and we prepare them by uh, helping them uh, manifest or move in the supernatural and be salt and light wherever God has placed them. So we to you know equip them to do this. Then we also understand that we must also partner with other churches in the city. So we can't do this alone. Uh, we are in partnership with other churches and ministries. So we pray, we proclaim the gospel, we prepare the people, and we partner with other churches in the city. And that's how spiritually we engage to make a difference. Lastly, in the last section, we talked about the personal life of the church planter now uh, that you know you need to recognize that god has called you to this kind of work to plant a church or to um, start a ministry uh, you know it requires that certain grace to do that and we mentioned some of the indicators of grace we said some of we should avoid some of the wrong reasons to plant a church and uh, you could either start on your own or you can work with a existing church or ministry to, to plant the church and then, you know we talked about the pros and cons and things that we need to be careful of when you're working with an existing organization we also talked about personal preparation things that you could do personally to be prepared to uh, go out and plant a church or start a christian ministry in the city uh, these are some of the things that will be required from us and then as you make the journey you know, uh, here are some things to keep in mind. Don't quit. Uh, be strong. And, uh, you know, make sure that what you do is passed on so that the work can continue uh, long after you're gone. Right? So these were the four main sections that we covered in this course. Um, it's a very practical course. And usually what we do is uh, I tell people to, you know, do an assignment where, you uh, they actually take all of these things and think about, you know, uh, uh, you know, carry this out in their minds or on paper of planting a work uh, in a certain city in the world. Uh, but uh, and then we do presentations in class. Um, uh, but now since this thing is online and uh, you know it's a little different, so I kind of skipped that kind of exercise. Instead, I'll just give you some practical scenarios in your questions to work on and uh, and you can you know just envision those scenarios and, and apply what you've learned to address those kinds of situations so that's i'll give you some assessments along that line um uh, to just uh, as part of the evaluation but i think the real 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 uh, uh, benefit is when you take these things and then begin to actually uh, work them use them in your ministry uh, when you plant a church or when you start a christian ministry that's when you know these things will really come uh, handy will be useful uh, as you begin to do the work so keep these notes with you uh, and go back to them uh, especially when you're getting ready to start a work or when you're doing a work go back reference these notes think of ways you can apply it to the work uh, you are doing or going to do uh, and make use of it. Okay. Uh, any thoughts, any questions um, on this course um, so far? Okay. Um, so the plan now is uh you know so this is end of october so during the month of november and there will be no classes what i will do is just keep an eye out for those notifications that come through google classroom um, uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to create three assessments that will be more of uh, an uh, application of the things we learned to 
scenarios. Uh, uh, so then you could just, uh, that'll be a way of assessing your understanding of the content. Uh, uh, although uh, the real learning happens when you start using this content in your life and ministry. So uh, in the month of November, it'll just be a time for you to do these three assessments. And uh, yeah, that will be it, uh, right? Uh, but at any time, uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions on this or sometime in the future. Just remember that we are here uh, as you start doing your church and church plant or ministry or work. And if you need any help or guidance, you know, you're most welcome to reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to share whatever we know, whatever we've learned uh, with you to help you in your personal journey. All right. So let's close in prayer. Um, may I ask uh, um, Thomas to please uh, close the class in pr prayer and then we will dismiss. Sure, Pastor. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful subject. Father, as we learned many things, Father, we useful as we do the ministry, as we plan the church, as we're doing a ministry, Father. Let this course will be useful, Father. We thank you. Father, bless each and everyone in this classroom. Let each and everyone will be used in your hand mightily. Let, mm -hmm. let everyone will be the church planter in urban city, Father. Let your kingdom grow. Let your let your kingdom grow, Father. We thank you. We praise you for your mercy. We love you. We praise you, Father. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, each one. Thank you all for being part of this course. And uh, it's been our privilege to journey with you. And uh, uh, definitely look forward to you know the other courses we have. Finish Romans, and then we also look forward to next semester. We have a lot of practical things. We talk about technology, media, and technology in ministry, and. Um, other things. So it's been a good uh, time journeying with you and uh, look forward to more classes together. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. God Pastor. bless. Bye now. Bye. Bye now. God bless.